Good evening and welcome to the second live stream fly tying uh, with me, Alex Jardine. Uh, today we're going to look at tying uh, dry flies, specifically for, for trout and grayling, uh, using um, the wonderful CDC feather. Uh, for anyone who's not come across uh, the CDC feather, uh, it is in fact um, called Calder Canard, uh, which stands for uh, literally butt of a duck. Uh, and the reason we use that feather is because it comes from right next to the oil glands on, on the duck. And those oils, those natural oils, are, uh, are really buoyant. So by using that feather, we take away that quality, uh, which is perfect for tying dry flies because it, they're naturally buoyant. Um, so through the course of, uh, of this session, what we're going to look at is different ways of using uh, the CDC feather. Um, and that will allow us to, um, uh, to tie dry flies for lots of different occasions uh, and hopefully um, give you some new patterns for success. Uh, I'm going to start with, uh, with an oldie but a goodie and that's the CDC shuttlecock buzzer and the reason we use this fly is um, it's particularly a fly that we use a lot for uh, English uh, lake fishing uh, but it's where um, where you're trying to imitate uh, the minch swimming up from the weed beds, uh, breaking through the surface where they get stuck uh, before hatching out into the adult minch. And the reason we like to capture this emerger stage uh, is because the trout hone in on it. It's an easy meal for them uh, and it's terrific fishing too. So here we have a, a simple curved hook on a standard wire. Um, shank. Uh, this one is a partridge K4AY, um, but most uh, shrimp or um, sort of caddis shaped hooks will do a similar job. And I like a slight curve because it looks like the fly trying to break through the surface. Um, for our thread, um, very simple black thread. Uh, this is a Semperfly uh, 12 0 wax thread. Uh, I like 12 0, it's a got enough thickness on it that it will um, that it will help us produce a body for this particular fly and the way we start just back from the eye wrap it over the hook and take a few turns to lock everything in place now we're everything's locked in we're in control what I like to do now is take the threads I don't cut off the tag end yet um, because I want to generate touching turns and by keeping that tag end, it allows me to control the thread going down the shank of the hook. Run that all the way down. Once I get towards the final part of the bend, um, I will take that tag end off. So I don't want it showing. And I will tidy up that point. And now I'm going to do touching turns back. Try not to touch the point of the hook there. So this is lying the initial basis of our body. And then I'm going to get our rib material, which here it is a, bear with me. Here we're using a holographic pearl um, pearl miler, and this is quite small in diameter. Uh, this is one sixty-four of an inch, and the reason I'm using this is I don't want to take away from the black body by using a solid colour rib, um, but I just want to enhance it by adding something interesting to the fly. So we tie that in at the top end here and wherever you tie it in, try and hold it in that position all the way back and work your thread back down. So you'll notice that those original two layers of thread body combined with the third layer and soon to be fourth will generate a decent body thickness that out the way 
and touch in terms on the way back hiding any of that holographic and now we can work our rib material forward so with that first turn anchor it in and then just pop your finger on top of it to hold it in place like that, that doesn't get caught and the same again otherwise you can find it will sometimes slip which of course we don't want take it forward nice open turns probably about it slipping there we go right. and then lock it off two turns over the top two in front or three and, and that's it there all locked off in place and we'll just take our scissors and trim that out there problem with holographic is it sticks to everything um, right now I'm going to lay a little thread base there and we're going to add in obviously the most important material of the evening, the CDC. You'll find that it comes in various bounce sizes. I always try and get the biggest ones because I go through so much CDC through the course of the season. And here with the shuttlecock, what we want is to make sure that we get quite a lot of buoyancy. So here I've selected three feathers which should do the job perfectly. Um, they're all pretty uniform and I'm trying to max the tips up. So I have the feathers all facing the same direction and all curved down on top of each other rather than pairing them against each other which would create a dome. Uh, I want them all to lie flush with each other. Once they're paired up, hold the stems, trap them, and stroke the fibres forward. Use the natural moisture in your fingers to allow that to take shape. And then once that's there, so now we're going to look to create roughly the same length as the body as the wing. We do that by trapping the feathers on top and taking the thread up over the CDC, forming a loop and sliding it down on top. Keeping the thread pressure on, place a few more locking turns on. Just with good pressure, we don't want to let that CDC wrap round. Taking a couple of turns in front to help lock that and stop it from going anywhere. You can also do round the back. I try not to do too many round the back uh, because that will kick everything up and create it and make it a little bit too bulky. Then go in with your scissors and just neatly just trim away. I do this with a few cuts just to make sure I'm getting in there and cutting everything out. And you'll see that's facing forwards now. And that's our shuttlecock appearance. So nice and um, expansive forwards. And that's our indicator of where the fly is on the water. And the rest of the body, this black thread bit, is the bit that will sit underneath the surface in the fish's realm and hopefully be the bit that makes it look appealing to any passing by. When midges hatch out, particularly our larger lake midges, um, their wing buds, the area just around here where you've got the thick thorax, uh, quite often has a, a sort of orange haemoglobin glow about it just before the wings explode out. So always like to add that touch in. Here's just a bit of orange CDC dubbing. And we're just going to put couple of turns of that in. First as a little hot spot and then a simple hair's ear natural dubbing. You'll notice that this is quite a popular dubbing for a lot of thoraxes in my drives. And I've just taken a little 
pinch of it and you've got to press it to the thread and spin it round. You want some tighter bits, some looser bits, so you get that leggy, bushy bit. And now you're looking to keep a uniform thickness and hide any of that black thread that was showing through that area. Once you're at the front, fold the wing back and put a few turns in front. Essentially you want to create like a dam, just a, an area that pushes that wing up. So stroking it back, a few turns there, lengthen it off and in with the whip finish tool. So fold that back round once, five, three times, unhook it off and once again. Again, some of you won't like to use a whip finish tool. Uh, that's absolutely fine. Just a finger hand whip finish is fine or just a half hitch tool. Uh, they all do similar jobs. Um, now that's all locked off. Just open your scissors into a V shape, push it against the thread and out. And there you have it, the shuttlecock buzzer. I'll just change that angle slightly in the vise. So that's how we would expect it to sit in the water. So the water would be roughly the eye of the hook there. The wing would be exploding above the surface of the water. This would be sat underneath. A tasty meal for, for any passing fish. Uh, particularly good uh, for our spring springtime reservoir fishing in the UK. Right, so there we have, starting off with the simple shuttlecock. Now I'm going to take you into a similar style of fly, um, but tying it in a slightly different way. Uh, this time, we're still on the curved hook, uh, the K4AY. And this fly is a little bit of a crossover. Um, I've coined it the D Dave's Grey. Uh, essentially the pattern was shown to me by, um, by Dave Wiltshire, uh, a fantastic local fly tire. And he put me onto this fly for actually quite tricky midsummer conditions where the fish are being really fussy. And this fly just seems to tick all the right boxes. And like the shuttlecock, it's got the forward facing wing, um, but we actually only utilize a very small amount of the hook. Uh, so here we've got a size 18. Um, I've changed the threads now, still black, um, but I'm now on an 18.0 nano silk uh, by Samplefly. So it's a, um, uh, it, it's like a Dyneema. It's very fine, very strong, uh, and perfect for doing small fly work. Um, as before, fold the thread round the hook, and always with this, it takes a couple more turns than a standard wax thread, just to hold shape. I, I don't want to take it much past the point of the hook, uh, because as I say, I'm only going to use a very small amount of the hook. Right. To the point, take it back towards the eye. And there we've laid our thread work. Now it's a very interesting way of tying with, with CDC. So when you compare a feather that size to a hook that size, if we were only to tie with a tip, that's quite a lot of wasted material uh, from, from the fly. Um, so for this, we actually take the scissors, very small V again, and we just cut down along the stem uh, to create little V-shaped sections. I'll hold one up to the camera in a second. Uh, and the reason we do this is it allows us to tie firstly with the whole feather uh, if we want to. And rather than using three feathers as before, we can actually tie one fly with one feather. So it gives us these little v-shaped wings and much the same as before we pair them up 
but this time we paired stems together and the bottom ones you'll see are even fluffier than the top section so they're even more buoyant so a nice combination of sort of top middle and lower will give you a nice variety of fibers I want there's only four four segments together here and I've got another two left from that one feather and that will give me enough fibers and it will give me a whole series of lengths which we can deal with in a second but we'll pinch that all together and make sure that when you're tying this in that you're not trapping the stems in but you're just trapping the fibers and the reason we do that is it will keep the actual body build up to a minimum and make sure that we get maximum amount of these buoyant fibers facing forward so pop that down as before pinch that thread up through trap it down once twice three times four Oop, just put a bit too much pressure on that last one and they wrap round and we can actually take those forward a little Strike those back and just put those locking turns in front just so it's not going to go anywhere. Tap that back down and we'll cut those fibers out of the back. You'll see I'm not cutting any stems now. So I don't have that thick non-buoyant part of the feather in my tying at all for this fly. And we can trap that down. And we've created a nice little hump part of the fly there and keeping this fly as minimalistic as possible I go back to the hairs here of before take a little bit of it wrap it round again the benefit of using hairs here is you get those nice guard fibers as well as the Sort of, so you get a nice combination of covering um, but also leggy areas so I'll put, just do that final turn so you'll see very small segment all in front of the point of the hook uh, just opens out nicely so we've got to the wing we can put the turns in front so this fly is not actually finished at this point but we're done with the thread so round whip finish again we're using that thread build up in front of the wing just to help ease it out and then just nip the thread off there all right now at the moment that wind's quite messy it's not how i quite want it so we need to shorten it and tidy it up. What we don't want to do necessarily is go in with scissors and cut that off because that will give us a very unnatural straight finish. So what I'll do is pinch it, keep it quite open and go in with the fingernail from my right hand. Obviously if you tie the other way around it will be left hand. And use your fingernail to pinch those out and tidy it up and then you'll have a much neater finish as if you were pairing wings up normally. If your fingernail doesn't seem fit for the task then what you can do same again grip it up and take the scissors in and rather than cutting that way and giving yourself a straight edge just place the tips in try not to cut yourself doing this and just use it up that way then you won't get a straight cut but you're still get that lovely tapered finish as if using the natural ones so this is Dave's Grey a great fly for smutting trout in the summer and that's just when you see their nose pointing forward and just inching in particularly under trees uh, it's worth having a few of these with black bodies as well uh, perfect for any beetle feeders or small ant feeders um, and it can get you out of a lot of difficult situations.
So there we have it, the two simple ways of tying um, shuttlecock style. So with a forward facing wing. Now we're going to move on to uh, the other popular style, uh, which is tying with the wing facing backwards. And there's few better flies to show the style um, than um, the F fly. Um, again, one of our uh, one of our great river patterns in the UK. Uh, this will cover a huge range of situations from small beetles, uh, ants again, uh, all the way through to small stegers and and even upwings at times. But it, it wouldn't be necessarily my go-to fly. Um, so this time uh, you'll see a straight wire hook. Uh, this is an Partridge SLD. Uh, this is a size. Uh, one looks like a size 16. Uh, I generally will tie these in 18s and 20s, um, but for the purposes of the video, I'm going a little bit bigger. Uh, again, we're using the black nano silk uh, in an 18 0. And we're going to start just back from the eye. Uh, it's always worth doing this, it will help you gain perspective uh, in tying any fly um, towards the end just so you don't bulk up too much material going forwards. So now I'm going to go in with the scissors, slide that out, uh, and add in our first material, which for this one, it's the Blood Red Fluoro Bright uh, by Semperfly. Uh, and this is just to give us a little tag area at the back of the fly. Um, to add a little bit of colour and a and a hot spot for the fish to hone in on, um, it works particularly well in low light situations. Having these hot spots and in brighter light, you might want to um, use one without the hot spot. So trap that in and wind it down, more or less towards the end of the straight part of the shank. Take your thread a fraction forward, and then. Simply choose one touch and turn forward, about four or five turns. Take your thread through it, round the front to lock it all in place as before with the other materials, and just cut it out there. And there you've created a very simple tag, uh, perfect for this particular fly. Uh, now we're going to build in a body and it's just going to be simple black dub. Uh, There's a super fine uh, dubbing by Semperfly, but uh, any any simple black dubbing will be fine. Nice thing with a super fine dubbing is it dubs so easily. So take the top part of it, spin it with the thumb and forefinger, use the moisture in the in the hand to help grip. Once you've got that top bit you can slide it up wrap it around the hook to give you purchase at the top and then you can actually just tighten it from the bottom and you'll see that will tighten all the way along and we'll use that just to build a little body um, it's up to you how you do it whether you want it tapered forward or whether you want it uniform or it's like a small taper forward um, partly it helps buoy the wing up at the front and we can take it forward to where we started our thread wraps. Uh, placing a few uh, to lay the base for the wing, uh, we'll then pick a couple of feathers, uh, now back to three feathers. Uh, ideally you'd want short feathers like this rather than spending too much time hunting around. I'm just going to take three reusable feathers and again tip to tip pair them together so you'll see them all paired up together all facing in the same direction and again teasing all those fibers to point together and go in the same direction. So take a 
making it, it's not too jumpy at the moment. Um, right, so now, unlike the shuttlecock tying it forward, uh, we're going to tie it backward and we want it to mask the whole body and overshoot the back of the hook. So we'll do that by pressing it up, measure it against, but then take your left hand to take control of it, run your thread up through, a loop over it, pulling down, and do your tightening turns. Just take a look back to make sure it's all okay. Put another one in, and then put your turns in front. That will just help lock it, as I said before. Back over the top and try and trim this. The light ain't got the way so we can see it. Trim this as tidily as you can at the front. Don't worry too much about a bit of bump showing. As we tidy that with a bit of dubbing. With the smaller versions of this, the 18s and the 20s, you may find that you'll just need to work the thread to tidy everything down. But being slightly bigger, we can get the super fine dubbing and dub it really tight and just wrap it around and create a small head area. You can use your thumbnail if you think the materials are just getting trapped a little bit tight there. Bring that through. Hold the eye just so that we don't bend that hook back. And we'll go in with the width in it. Right back again. Put that in with the thumbnail. Again. Always do a second one just for extra confidence, but be honest one's plenty and there you have it simple f fly like the two previous flies are a great one for for all occasions and that red hot spot can be the difference between catching and not catching on many occasions sticking with that style of tying uh, we're now going to move on to a more sedge like pattern and this time one for occasions when you're looking for more buoyancy and um, we're putting the video up that actually they don't like CDC because they find that it, it often sinks and that might be the case if you were using something like the F-Fly in fast turbulent water where it can easily get dragged in by the current and at which point it will get quite waterlogged and start sinking. Um, being a delicate feather, it works best on, on flatter surfaces. Um, but it's such a great fly for, it's such a great material for when the fish actually take because it crumples under their mouth so you get a better hook hold. Um, so I tend to favor CDC based wings over um, deer hair only wings because you, quite often find that uh, you have a, a certain amount of tape that will get pushed away or uh, that you wouldn't, don't necessarily hook up on. And I feel that's because deer hair won't crumple under the tape, it'll actually just get pushed away from the fish. Um, so one workaround for this where you're faced by turbulent water, uh, but also the possibility of fish taking aggressively and, and actually almost missing the fly uh, is to combine some CDC with some deer hair. So you take the positives of both materials, uh, reduce them a little bit, put them together, um, and and really get the almost the best of both worlds. Uh, so again, stuck with the black 18.0 nano silk, just back from the eye of the hook, and begin winding that back. Just trim that out. So what we want to do, take that thread all the way to the end of the straight part of the shank. Body color here is really personal preference. 
uh, I'm going to stick with a uh, super fine uh, dry fly dubbing. Uh, this is in Mark's brown, so it's a, a sort of cinnamony brown color. And again, just straighten it off. Trap it in by the small selection at the top. And what you'll notice with a lot of caddis flies, if you look at the um, um, if you look at the um, the body on a on a sedge, uh, it's actually quite uniform, grub-like. So we don't want that mayfly-style taper going forward. We actually just want a very quick taper and then a uniform body all the way along. So what I'll do. The nice thing about these long fiber super fine dubbings is you can hold the end and backwind on it to help create that body and you'll notice that I don't mind it being quite rough along the body because I'll stroke it along and I use some of that roughness to brush out the fibers and I'll add a fraction more but not a lot because I want to leave a decent amount at the front um, for tying in the wing Just enough that we've got that nice body shape. So by all means tie some of these with a grey body or with a with a caddis green. It's a really vibrant green. Um, I like the brown, I think it covers a lot of situations. And then as with uh, the previous fly, the F fly, uh, we're going to find three feathers that we like the look of and match them together tip tip to tip all facing the same direction and match together stroking the fibers back so we get all the good fibers going the right direction and as before we want the wing to overshoot the body and the rear part of the hook and rather than tying it that way or upwards tie it so the concave is facing down and that you get the stems in the middle and a good spread of fibers either side of the hook and get that in position pinch spread it up in between and loop it down so just show that again up see i've pinched the thread so i've got free movement there slide and back down and if you see it wrap a little bit you can twist it back before putting a good amount of locking turns in so the benefit of using the 18-0 thread here is a you've got the uh, you've got the strength of the nano silk which will allow you to pull down and really hold those materials in place but the thinness of the 18 o allows you to put a lot more thread thread turns in than you would be able to with a with a wax thread um, or a zip bow and 8 uh, or equivalent to that right so now that's in position we're happy with it um, we're not going to cut out these wasted materials just yet uh, we're going to take our deer hair this is just a a simple fairly all-purpose deer hair nothing too complicated um, I don't like to use elk uh, for this uh, I prefer a, just a simple deer hair I like the the color variation or the variation you get from light to dark to light again um, it's particularly good for our uh, granum caddis uh, looks very similar to their wing uh, that we get early in our season here so take a handful of them just a reasonable spattering and you'll get these furry fibers that get caught in into the mix and just take the other hand and just stroke them out you can get a brush for this um, but i find that this works 
well enough for what I want. And then we take our deer head stacker, which I'm going to do just out of frame, where I drop them in, tap them, and they'll all be in position. What I don't want to do here is lift that up that way, because then I won't get hold. Turn it horizontally and remove the base section. Now you'll see that all the fibers are level, face in the right direction, and I want to take it so it's already facing the way that I want to tie it in. I don't want to do it the other way and then have to try and pass it from hand to hand and turn it around because by that point I'll lose the shape that I've created. So pinch the, the end, top hand briefly to line it up, lie it on top there, and we take our thread over, and that first turn, let it hold everything in shape, but don't pull it too tight, and take a couple in front of it. Then go behind with a few more, and just add the pressure as you wind forward, and you'll see those front fibers all ballooning out, but back ones don't to the same extent. And that's because we're putting the pressure on the front side and not the back. There's always one bit of fibre that will get caught the way you don't want it. So you can tidy those up towards the end. And just trap that out. Take it forward now. Make sure everything's secure. Because this is your big test now. You're going to cut everything out. And I cut it long. Uh, I quite like that all overshooting the front of the hook. Can make it a bit challenging when tying the tippet on, but as long as you have confidence that you haven't blocked the eye of the hook, uh, the tippet will go through with relative ease. And then for the dubbing, another great use of CDC is to use it as dubbing. Um, so here is one of the feathers that we've just cut off. And all I'm going to do, stroke out some of the fibers away from the stem, pinch it with my thumb now. You can, of course, cut the fibers off. And just a small pinching of it. You can dub it on. And being a lovely soft fiber, it dubs incredibly easily. And enough for couple of turns round and you've done the thorax of your of your stage. Right, now I've just taken a thread underneath there that will help move it out the way of the eye if we're tying on any thread. Lengthen that off. Go in with the whip finish tool and a couple of times. And again, and there you have it. You've got a CDC and deer hair sedge. This is really, really buoyant because you've combined the softer buoyancy of the CDC with the stiffer deer hair fibers, which are hollow, so they hold air, which makes them really nice and buoyant. You've got a wonderful catted shape and it will show up in any water really fast. And if you're finding it a bit tricky to see, what you can do is either take out one of the CDC feathers or a little bit of the deer hair and trap in a, a sight a bit of um, either aero wing or, um, or posting, um, some sort of posting material in, a, in an orange or a pink and that will make it really visible, particularly in low light conditions. So now we've looked at the two standard ways of tying with CDC, both forwards and backwards. We're going to look at a couple of the other wonderful benefits of CDC away from uh, its sort of more traditional wing style tying. And I'm going to 
go back to the 12 volt classic wax thread and this time much bigger hook you'll see so this is fly is um, one that I worked on myself which was um, for um, for our um, mayfly our ephemera danica which is our biggest mayfly that hatches locally uh, and this is uh, the um, the park shoot uh, sedge hook so it's got the slight curve and um, this particular fly being an emerger I want some of it to sit subsurfaced uh, I quite like the straight eye for this particular fly rather than a down eye uh, and I like the elongated shank um, so again starting back from the eye work in our thread oh well don't worry too much about the neatness of the thread at this point because being a bigger fly um, we will use a lot more material to cover everything up take this right the way back to literally the point where you want the tail to start which on this hook is back from the barb uh, just round the bend area a little and we get our trusty material uh, the pheasant tail and um, very famously um, mayfly the ephemera danica in particular has three tails so for this I use three pheasant tail fibers and cut those out cut them long and what we'll do is we'll them quite short you'll see just just half the length of the body and I hold it on my side and let the thread wrap it on top of the shank of the hook might take a little bit of positioning and trap it in once I got a couple of turns in actually wrap turn that back so it's facing backwards and forwards a little bit just so it's in an easier location and I'm going to tie in the rib material now which this is a interesting material called micro metal um, by Semperfly it's designed to give you the effect of a wire um, but on a on a thread based material so for for dry flies it doesn't add additional weight so it doesn't mean that it means that your uh, your flies shouldn't be being pulled down by the rib material. I'm going to tie that in so it runs down the side of that pheasant tail. I run my thread forward, run it to there, relatively touching turns, and then two or three really open turns to get the thread out the way. That's really just to move it out the way of the point so I can wrap this pheasant tail around the shank. And the interesting things with our ephemera danica is it's a, a big yellow mayfly, but it has three segments at the back which are, which are quite dark. So the, the reason for the opening turns is we're actually going to undo them at that point all the way back down to that and now we're going to tie off our pheasant tail a couple of turns as I say over the top and a couple of turns in front and trim that out so we're done with that part and we're not ready for the rib yet now we're going to build the body which here you'll see there's a nice sort of slightly greeny cream uh, which is very helpfully on here called Danica uh, this is the super fine dubbing again uh, but a sort of cream creamy um, camely colored dubbing is, is perfect for this uh, this is a great style of fly um, even for for green drake hatches in in the US so build the, the dubbing up downside we're using the black thread is you have to um, have to make sure that you've got a decent covering but 
not a problem. So we'll put a couple of turns just to get it started. And going forward, rather than wind too, too much dubbing on it once, what I quite like to do is go back over areas of dubbing and add fresh turns rather than trying to put a thick piece of dubbing uh, on the thread. Uh, because by if you add too much in one area, you lose control of the dubbing. Um, and it can result in the fly looking quite messy towards the end. So you're better to work with a thinner amount of dubbing and build up your turn on a fly like this. Because I'm not looking to use the thread to not looking to use the uh, the dubbing and brush it out for bushiness. I want it just to be nice and smooth. A bit much on there so we can take that off and just nicely I'm going to take the thread on there a little and now we're just going to work our rib back and we're going to wind the opposite direction and the reason we're doing that is just because of those original turns of pheasant tail and that will just help lock that in place and now we're in the area where we want to create the segments. So each one should open out a fraction as we take it forward. And when we get to the front, again, a couple of lock and turns in front, front and behind, and we can trim that out. And there we have it. The body is made for it, and now we're going to do the interesting part of this fly. So here's a favourite material of many people, foam. It's really changed dry fly fishing. Um, it's just such a, a great material for to keeping flies buoyant for long periods of time. So I've cut a strip here and. Um, this is two and a half mil closed cell foam. Um, perfect. The nice thing about this one is it squeezes down and you can tie it in quite neatly. Uh, I've cut it to probably four or five mil wide there. And I'm going to tie it in on the top of the hook there. I don't want to tie it too close to the eye, otherwise it can push it and get pushed forward and make sure it's nicely trapped down so it's not going anywhere and facing backwards uh, you'll notice it's quite a long piece and you'll you'll see why in a second now we're going to tie in our cdc feathers you want good long long feathers for this you don't want the little stumpy ones with a good spread of these nice fluffy fibers coming out either side. And you'll see I've stroked back from the tip. And the reason we do that is we tie the tip in and we want all those good fibers towards the back of the hook, uh, towards the back of the feather uh, ready for tying. So tie that in, cut the tip of the feather out and get a second one and do exactly the same. There's a couple of fibers there, but not to worry. And we'll tie it as horizontally as possible, but again, I don't worry too much with this and you'll see why in a second. Trim those out and turn them around. Here we get our trusty hackle pliers and I take the second feather that we tied in and trap it at the end. Now bring our foam forward and we actually take the feather round as a parachute. We don't worry about being too neat 
with how that's going on. And I will try and get that last turn in because those bottom fibers are fantastic. Use the weight of the bobbin holder here to tie it off. Try not to worry too much about any trap fibers that as they're inevitable with this style of tying. And once I've got a couple of thread turns over the top, trim that out. That's done. And we go with the second one. And we make sure that's grabbed okay. And we do exactly the same job here. So wind that through and you'll see a nice build up of those fluffy bushy fibers. So wind that this time I might have to do one less on that. But wind that through. So again, tie it off. Try and save a few fibers there. So I'll turn that through, cut that feather out. That's the way. Now this part just stroke back the fibers and take my thread over the top of them a little. And now we're going to get our Thorette dubbing, which here is um, African goat dubbing by Nature Spirit uh, in Canadian leech, uh, brown leech. Um, if you watch the previous stream, uh, you'll see that I use this dubbing quite a lot. Uh, I just love the um, the brown and olive, golden olive um, combination of um, of fibers. Uh, it's just really buggy, really kind of natural variation of of colors and um, and the last thing with the dubbing is like seals fur it's just really bushy leggy um and great for dry flies because it holds it uh, holds its shape and takes um takes floating very well too and we're just going to build that thorax up nicely and make sure we're just gonna unwind that a little bit just give it forward a fraction that we leave a reasonable amount of room at the front so what we're going to do now let's get to a couple more of those fibers out where it got caught um, we now brush those fibers back back and up and we pull that foam that was facing backwards all the way forwards and you'll see now the CDC fibers are all pushed and fanned up just like the first part of the wings exploding out the back of the mayfly and we pull that foam forward pinch it and take our thread through and underneath to help lock that in place there we get a bit more of our thorax dubbing and just a small pinch and all this is to do is to hide that thread that we've built up a little there throw the foam back and out the way and go in with our whip finish tool so we are going to cut that foam back in a second but it's easier to leave it long at this point to help pull it out the way when we're tying off the fly trim the thread out and then I'll turn that your way a little and all I'm going to do is cut flat across to create that little sighter and I like the tan color because it's the natural closer to the natural um, but you can use orange foam uh, I originally tied it with white foam uh, to be nice and Nice and bright but I do prefer it with this tan um, and you'll notice when you're fishing this fly uh, and you use a, a powder floatant it looks so like the real thing catching off um, that 
sometimes it's difficult to pick out your fly from there from the real one uh, and fortunately the fish often find that too uh, so there you are uh, a mayfly merger with a seeded sea feather used to parachute a wing and now we're moving on to the final fly we're um, keeping it on our um, uh, our UK ephemera danica mayfly um, but again as I say this fly will work as well for the green drake in America um, now we've got a size 10 straight shank hook um, this is the SLD uh, you can tie this on um, on bigger hooks so a size 8 or a size 10 long shank something equivalent uh, which would be perfect for the natural size you can also look at color variations on this down in 12s and 14s for for different flies um, which is perfect uh, so again I've gone with the 12 o wax thread uh, just trim that off there and take it to the back of the hook so we're going to use pheasant tail again and the back end of the this fly is pretty similar um, but I don't tie in the the rib for this one uh, I make the tail twice the length as the emerger so the length of the body roughly and trap it in on top right in backwards then double that back over open those out and that's to build this those darker segments at the back if you prefer not to wrap the pheasant tail you can use a darker uh, darker dubbing for those back segments uh, also just using um, the uniform dubbing all the way along uh, doesn't make a huge amount of difference so you feel better as a as a fly tire um, getting close to it those darker segments at the back and now back to the Danica colored super fine dry fly dubbing uh, with those really long fibers so use the first couple of turns to lock everything in place and then you can tighten it up and tidy up that area and build up your your body going forwards so just a little bit more dubbing and then we'll be there don't want to go too far forward uh, because we need plenty of space to work with for the wing on this one so take your thread forward to the eye at this point and here we have a French partridge feather and you'll see that the furry fibers have already been stripped off here and what we want to do is actually stroke these fibers back until we find a point in the middle and we want to make sure that those fibers are the right length so you can pair it up against the hook and see I want quite a long draping hackle at the front here so I've prepa prepared it by stroking some fibers back and leaving that tip section forward and then to tie this in um, we have it facing so it's sweeping up and the tip facing back and we trap that in facing that direction right at the tip of the fly and run that back nice and tight and trim that tip 
section out and we leave that facing backwards for the time being. Now we have the interesting part with the CDC and there's multiple ways that we can we can do this um, but one of the great ways is to create a is to split the thread and create a dubbing loop um, so here I've got an olive CDC feather and I'm going to pair it up with our standard natural CDC and um, it's particularly effective in the green drake but our own um, mayfly also has uh, quite a lot of green in it um, so by pairing that up you you will get that combination of uh, green and green and sort of gray, dark gray showing so what you'll see now is I've taken a needle and I've split the thread so this is why you don't want to really go much finer than 12 volt and you'll see that I've now created essentially two threads and we can lengthen that down a little and the reason I've done this so let's split that off reason I've done that is I now want to take these two feathers that I paired together and I want to slide them just a fiddly bit there are tools out there to make this easier uh, I seem to like the pain of trying to do it myself so I put them between the two threads that you created and let them get trapped in and let the thread match up and you can twist it and that will start tightening that thread back up and then take your scissors and the only problem is everything starts twisting around but you can start cutting one side of the feather away and twisting that thread up and this is creating a dubbing loop get that out of the way in a second but we'll just get that nice and tight and then you'll find out what side of it was an issue there we go so you'll see we've got all these nice spiky CDC feathers now caught on get rid of the tip one of the feathers there Trim that out, and what we're going to do is wrap that around, and we'll get this really nice sort of dubbing long fiber hackled like bit going forward with the nice color combination and then once we've tied all of that in we'll stroke a little bit left on that stroke it forward take that thread in front and now we're going to deal with the french partridge and we do that like any other hackling this is kind of like a soft hackle we only want a couple of turns at most so stroke those fibers make sure that they're going to drape backwards and this is where you hope that you've left yourself enough room at the front and just stroke back as you turn just to make sure that 
okay, the fibers get released, um, but also that those CDC fibers are caught nicely, trace and batter. And we take that round. I like to finish it at that point. So when the feather's facing up, we take the thread through the fibre. Let's bob and hold it there. And go again. You shouldn't trap any of the fibres tying that way. Stroke it back and out the way. And place a couple of turns in front. Now go in with your thread, don't breathe for a second, trim that out, hold everything in place and just neaten up the head area. And then get your whip finish tool and the finishing touches on the fly there. Two whip finishes. And there you have it, a great fly for the full adult ephemera danica, uh, the mayfly, utilizing the buoyancy of the CDC and then the French partridge hackle to hold the shape of the fly and also use the stiffness of the fiber to give you a pronounced sitting fly on the surface that's a great one and there you go that's the the final final fly of our evening um, we've gone through several different ways of using the wonderful cdc feather uh, to create dry flies um, i really do hope that you've enjoyed this little video um, all of these flies from these live streams are being put in a box together and will be available to one of my subscribers to win at the end of the year. Um, I hope you find these videos informative and, and that you can join in two weeks time uh, when we'll be covering a fresh subject. Thank you and join again. Bye.